Did y'all get any rain? We got a little. Did you? Not much here. We didn't get much. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Any little bit helps about right now. Why don't we um, get started and we'll let people catch up with us as we get started. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds I want fine. to start with introductions and then we'll give ours. Okay. Um, hi, Frank. Sam Marie. I'm the one that's been bugging you all this time. I finally get to put a face with you. <laughs> hey. So, um, just a little bit about me. I'm a field rep for Choice Partners, and I'm normally out in the field running around, banging on your doors, seeing if you need any help or anything. But this isn't a normal time. So, <laughs> hopefully, when things get back to normal, uh, I can come by and visit with you. Um, but uh, I've got a good support team behind me. And I've got um, several of them with me here today, and I'll let them kind of introduce themselves as we go along. Um, we have the uh, senior director, and we have an assistant director with us. We have a, uh, a, a senior facilities uh, manager with us, and uh, we've got a couple others just kind of sitting in. So um, it's just kind of an introduction to Choice Partners and who we are. And, trying to kind of show you our website, how to get around and, you know, we, uh, uh, we're pretty good at what we do. So anyway, we're hoping um, to get to, to know you guys a little bit better and hopefully you can use us and we can be some help to you in the, in the future. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn you over to the uh, uh, senior director, uh, Jeff Drury. So, um, with that, here he is. Yeah, you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Hello there. Ho hopefully, you don't mind these musical chairs too much and it's not too distracting to you. We're in our conference room and it's real easy for us to kind of switch in and out uh, uh, person by person. So, uh, welcome. And I was going to say, maybe just ask a, a, a question or two. Are you guys? What do you know about Choice? Have you heard about us? Have you specifically uh, used us in the past? Or, I mean, you personally, I know we've done a lot of work with various campuses in the system throughout. Mm -hmm. Well, before you get started, why don't we introduce ourselves too? Please, please. Yeah, so uh, as I think a few of you know, I'm the Director of Contracts and Procurement here at UT System, Frank Rygard's my name. Daria, you wanna go next? Yeah, sure. I'm Daria Vienna. I'm an assistant director here at UT System, assistant director of contracts and procurement, and I work with Frank and everybody else um, on our team. Okay. Ben? Uh, ben Kalanak, <clears throat> contract administrator with UT System, contracts and procurement. Okay. Uh, and we've got uh, two folks that aren't here right now. Hopefully they'll join us in a little while, but Chris Palacios and Eric, uh, hey, Erica Haynes would be the two that we're looking to see, but you guys could get started then. Steven, please uh, move ahead. As far as what I know about Choice Partners, I don't know a lot about them. Okay. Ben or Daria, do you have any, any knowledge of Choice? Uh, I think we used Choice a little bit at UT Austin before I you know, moved away, uh, I, but it, it would have been I think it was a new addition whenever I was getting ready to leave. Okay. I, I did Google you guys, so that's my knowledge. Um, I have <laughs> not used you in the past. Okay, we'll take Google. We'll take Google. Thank you. Okay, well, good. Um, yeah, we are, um, I'll go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, let me ask you a real quick question before I even go through the agenda. Do you guys are you actually, are you like the subject matter expert for all the various locations within the system? Are you actually responsible for certain facilities or how, how, do, how do you tie into say somebody at UT Arlington or, or UT, uh, uh, UTMB or, or UT San Antonio? Uh, how, does, how does that work? Do they, 
work with you guys every day or you're kind of your, your own separate world or? Well, it's a combination. I mean, you know, we, we are in partnership with um, some, some mm -hmm. items, some contracts and agreements related to other institutions within UT and, and oversee master agreements, but um, we also help them with other things. I think in a lot of ways though, it's an independent world. Uh, they have their own contracts and procurement as you guys are aware. Right. And uh, that's how it, you know, it works. Okay. They would be seeking out your services on their own for the most part. Yes, and that's, that's what we've kind of figured. I just didn't know how the, how the how they kind of the uh, the entity UT quote unquote UT system versus UT Arlington or whatever how y'all can tie it together. But thank you for that. Yeah, okay. I mean we're all one larger group of institutions, but uh, yes, they are independent. Um, for us, this is an opportunity to find another GPO option or under your umbrella. Okay. Or your system administration. Okay. All right. Good point. By the way, I just noticed. I don't know why, but Erica and Chris weren't on here, so I've just sent them a forward and, and asked them if they were able to join, and they may join us at any point. But. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, yeah, then that, that's fine. Okay, but here's just a little bit about what we're going to uh, discuss, tell you a little bit about who we are as close partners, a little bit of the introduction and history. We do have a history with UT system, uh, and uh, a little bit of what, what you guys have purchased in the past. And we're gonna kind of tell you a little bit about us. We've got a supply catalog. It's a, a hard bid line item catalog, a little bit kind of how to navigate the website, how to find a few different things uh, with us and on our site, a little bit about Jock. We know you have an internal, but just a lot of people still, we see all, a lot of universities that still use us as, 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 a, as, as an excess. And, and then just a little bit of Q and A and closing and just kind of, this is more introductory obviously for us and, and you guys, but, uh, but uh, we're we're not uh, we're not unknown to the UT system. Actually, the next slide we talk about sure. vendors. So I'm going to go ahead and just hey, say, Stephen, can I interrupt just a moment? I see Chris oh. has joined us. Hey, Chris, I apologize for you not being on this. I thought you were. So thanks for joining us. Can you just introduce yourself, Chris? Sure, Christopher Palacios. I'm a buyer for the UT system. Okay, and we we're all logged in as Stephen Kendrick. He'll be the one talking about the jock in a minute, and and. Uh, just a, a, a reintroduction. My name is Jeff Drury, the senior director here <laughs> of, the, uh, of the group. And uh, so it, it's, yeah, you don't, you don't know who we are. So it's, it's I, I told, I totally get it, but uh, yes. we are. We're I mean, we are your name tag. Yeah. <laughs> I see that. I see that. We're all going to, now, now you're going to really have a problem if you call Anne Marie Stephen. Okay. Or that's, that's what we're going to, we're going to have to question. No, but uh, <laughs> yeah. We are all, uh, we're all literally government employed. We work for Harris County Department of Education, which is the, uh, uh, there were, there's 254 counties in Texas. There uh, at one time were 254 counties, Department of Education, you know, 100, 150 years, was it? A couple, couple hundred years ago, whatever. Uh, 19, let's see, 1890, in the 1890s is when HCDE was founded. And uh, 253 out of the 254 have gone by the wayside. We're the only one left, which is Harris County, the largest county in the state. And there are a number of services provided by HCDE, including us, employee partners, uh, governmental purchasing uh, organization, national uh, co-op. And uh, we, you know, we kind of we kind of live and breathe in the same world you guys do. You know, we uh, a lot of the co-ops we fight against get bonuses and commissions, and they're able to spend money like drunken sailors. We're kind of, we're kind of like, we don't get bonuses. We don't get commissions, but we're in the, we're in the TRS. We're in the teacher retirement system. Uh, very similar parallel to what, what you guys are. So uh, we get audited by the state. We understand uh, uh, rules, regulations, compliance, uh, things like that. We've also just initiated an internal control audit from a third firm. Kind of, we like to think uh, iron sharpens iron as far as uh, we want to see if we're doing great, if we're not, uh, they're gonna they're gonna give us some findings, and we're gonna try and get better. We feel like we're very very far on the legal and compliance side. We know what we're doing. Uh, we've probably got six or seven hundred contracts at any point in time, uh, and we'll go over kind of the span of what we have and things like that also, and kind of tell you how to find things on our website. So uh, that's just a little bit about us. Uh, we've got a 
a lot of folks that have, that have been doing this uh, a long time and Choice Partners as, a, as an entity uh, in some form or fashion has been around. Uh, we've got some vendors that have been with us since the 1980s uh, that have done very well. And uh, so uh, the, the, the entity uh, Choice Partners or, or a cooperative tied to Harris County Department of Education has been around for a long time. We're not, we're not the new kids on the block. Obviously Harris County, we're based here in Houston. So uh, that's just a little bit uh, about us. And, oh gosh, these things are so faded. I can't hardly see the arrows, Steve. Yeah, it's second one in the left. Oh, it's way over there. Okay, here we go. So some of these names you might know. We've, uh, these are, this is just a sampling uh, before uh, the actual official GPO uh, started a couple of years ago. We had done a lot of work, you know, millions of dollars with various uh, UT locations across the state and, and including uh, uh, doing jock work with people like uh, like Vaughn and, and doing, you know, United Rentals, uh, the Xerox, you may have known them like as Dayhill in the past, uh, Bosworth paper, uh, four imprint, you know, various technology things, NWN, uh, New Horizons, things like that, Letzos, HVAC, uh, fixtures, furniture and equipment, library interiors. These are just some of the people that we have in the book showing activity and have worked through our contract with the UT system in the past. And uh, since uh, it got reinstated in uh, uh, August or, or uh, September, I'm gonna guess we've probably added a few vendors to here, but these are just kind of pre-re-upping the contract, if you will. So uh, sure. we, 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 we know the UT system, we know I'm a native Houstonian. I, I I know Texas pretty well. We we uh we we've been in and around and, and seen a lot of the campuses and done a lot with the various uh, locations and uh, and uh, UT entities uh, across the state. So let's go down. I don't need to be squinting. Uh, this is just I just like to, to put this on here. It's it's our uh, actually the body of the email from Paul Steinkraus. Uh, the assistant general mm -hmm. counsel, who's kind of the, the the decision maker, if you will, or he at least notified us back at the uh, at the end of uh, September. That hey guys, you're on. You're good. Uh, you're now part of the you're now part of part of our world again. Everybody has the ability to uh, to use you, and uh, you've been vetted, and uh, and and you're good to go. And so, you know, the next thing, uh, it's just another. This is another verification. I I just. I like to do this because some people, and again, it's, it's not it's not your fault. It's probably our fault more than anything. They're like, who is Choice Partners? Well, we're we're right here on your on your UT website. You know, UT System Collaborative Business Services. You see us listed right there. Um, I like to say it's it's listed in order from best on down, but uh, you know, unfortunately, it's listed in alphabetical <laughs> order, and we kind of come up at the top with Choice Partners. But uh, I like I like my first narrative, so I'm sticking with that. So they put the best at the top, and then uh, and then all the other guys you guys might deal with. So, uh, so Jeff, just so you're aware, I'm on the EPO committee. So I was there when the, this, we, part of the decisions. Oh, okay. Done. So you've seen the documents and things yeah. that we submitted. And yes, and also um, we, of course, are aware of our website there. You know, with all the GPOs that are approved. So yes, you're, you're okay. good. With that. I'm I, not trying yeah. to be too redundant, Frank. I'm just kind of, just kind of, uh, you know. That we, we've uh, we've actually done this. We're trying to to make as many of the uh, the locations and do just kind of this a similar introduction training type thing. This is who we are. We've done uh, UTMB down in Galveston, MD Anderson here in Houston, uh, San UT San Antonio Health Science Center, and I know we've got some some potentials out there with some of the other locations. We're just people are busy. Every a lot of people are are still here, there, and everywhere. You know, whether they're virtual or in the office. So. It's a process. We're trying to work through that just to say, hey, here's who we are. We're, you know, we're not a we're not a three-headed monster. You know, just just give us a shout if we can help you out. Sure. And and, uh, and go from there. So that's that's really what we're uh, trying to say. I didn't know you were that involved. So uh, well, thank you. Yeah. For help. Hopefully, hopefully you were one of the thumbs up or or <laughs> evaluated us us well. But uh, yeah, we yeah. think uh, we think it's a great opportunity, and we look forward to uh, to growing it. And not only getting back to where we might have been in the past, but dramatically exceeding that but it's a it's yeah. it's a road to hope because you a lot of people people are creatures of habit we've got to see, see what we can do to help out to either uh, replace people or or uh, or uh, you know uh, let, let, let folks use our contract but uh, so that's a little bit about uh, who we are and then I will have one more slide that I'm going to just talk about just generally 
and this goes back to uh, this is kind of one of our our, our centerpiece kind of slides or communication pieces, and it kind of breaks down who we are and what we supply. It's very very familiar to you guys, very very uh, intuitive as far as what you're buying, what you're purchasing. Uh, we've got a lot of the uh, educational uh, curriculum related uh, type items, a lot of the software, a lot of books, things of that nature, uh, classroom teaching aids, a, a lot of those things. A lot of it, some of it's geared more K to K-12, but there are a lot of uh, a lot of bleed over for higher ed for a lot of the uh, items that are in our uh, educational and, and curriculum suite of contracts and products and services. Uh, facility services, well, We'll have the we'll have the real Stephen Kendrick talk about that in a few minutes. Not <laughs> not 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 Jeff here, but uh, talk a little bit about uh, our our jock and trade jock. And we don't want to. We we've had presentations where we go three and four hours and go on a line item pricing and, and a whole lot of stuff. This is going to be very topical, just generically. Uh, use us as a backup if there's somebody out there. You may just go find a vendor that's on ours. And if you have any questions of us or of Stephen, we'd love to help out and, and answer questions, compliance, legality, how we how, how we go to market, what we know, you know, uh, things we can help you out with if, if there are things that, that pop up in, in that area. Food, cafeteria. Yeah, I think, uh, Jeff, if I can interject Absolutely. for a moment, I think what really of interest to us is looking at your big categories, JOC and others, uh, facilities, supplies and services, technology, any of the areas that yep. Uh, and then looking at our access to it, do we need to sign into access to get a, uh, you know, our ability to look at it when we'd like to search for a particular um, goods or service right. see listed on yours? That would be helpful. Well, Most you're asking you're asking the right question. I, jo I see Joanne sitting there chomping at the bit. She can't wait to get started because she's going to do a little website right. navigation with a lot of the simple things. So without, okay. without stating the obvious, you see the other supply services technology, and uh, I won't belabor those points because I think we'd rather get into a little more meat. And uh, we're gonna let Joanne talk. She's gonna briefly hit on the supply catalog then spend most of the time kind of going through exactly what you're asking, Frank, a live demonstration. Here's what you do. Here's what you can see on the, on the kind of the free side or the non-password side. And here's the other due diligence and things you can see on the back side. And, and, uh, and uh, Joanne is tremendous at uh, knowing and understanding uh, uh, all areas of the website and being able to uh, navigate the website uh, for you. So now are we relinquishing the control to Joanne right now? We're going to try. You should, but it's disabled on my side. Well, let's figure out why. Uh, May post. Otherwise, you can go ahead and advance the screen one. Yeah. I think this is going to allow you to host right here, Joanne. All right. See if you can do it now, Joanne. Okay, dokie. You see me here? Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, so. I'm Joanne Nichols. I'm the assistant director here at Choice Partners. I'm over the uh, commodities and construction contracts here for all the procurement at Choice. So uh, with that, I have, uh, I don't know, four contract managers that help me do all of these contracts. What I'm going to do today is kind of show you a brief overview of the website. I'm going to try to get you to learn the shortcuts, how to get where you need to go, when you need to be logged in, and when you don't. So um, with, with that, uh, when you first come to the website, you kind of see these banners that go across the top. Once you get here, they're very informative on the, on the about us. It gives you a lot of information. It gives you a lot of information about how our procurement process works. It gives you the FAQs of who, what, when, and where. Um, down at the very bottom of who we are, what we do, and how we do it, and why we do it, is a list of what's going to be in the folders for our due diligence. So if there's ever any a file that you need that is contained in this due diligence, you're going to have to be logged in and get to see that information. So I just kind of want you to want you to know that because that's what I call behind the curtain, okay? 
Uh, we have some other things here. We have a spotlight on COVID-19 so that if you need to find a particular item for COVID, then it would be right there behind the About Us screen on COVID-19. I also sh can show you where we have vendor spotlights, where we show that our events and, and anything that may be coming up. We have a very large member workshop that is tomorrow that starts at 10. If anybody is interested in that, you may come watch us here at Register Now. About the same thing you did today, but it's going to last a little longer. Um, actually, it'll be last a lot longer. So if you want to uh, get in on that, just simply come to the About Us, go into Under Events and register. It'll take you there. It'll also show you anywhere else that we may be going uh, in the future, um, at least probably about out six months. Uh, we also have a tab here called presentations. Uh, we take pride in teaching, learning, uh, explaining to our growth, uh, to our membership, uh, exactly what we do, how we do it, and how to get there. So if you ever want any of these um, trainings, you can simply go into them. Download is actually going to be your presentation, which will be your PowerPoint. So if you wanted to see a virtual webinar that we did on exterior building cleaning last week, then you would come in here. The download gives you the PowerPoint, but the exterior building cleaning will give you a YouTube address for you to copy paste. It doesn't link. That's our website. We're getting a new one in a few months, so all this may change. But right now you copy paste and you would be able to follow over at YouTube and be able to watch that video. Um, all, that's the same for each one of these member training, food co-op and what the food did for USDA and what we do for TDA. All of that is there under presentations. Our next button is the contact us button. The contact us button gives you a general inquiry if you just want to ask a question real quick and you don't want to dial this number right here. When you dial this number, you get me. So if you don't want to talk to me, then you can go ahead and inquire all of this nice little information and I'll get back to you as soon as I get the email. Other than that- Joanne, can yes. I interrupt you just a moment? Erica Jenkins has joined us. Erica, do you want to introduce yourself to the group? Hi, yes, thanks, Frank. My name's Erica Haynes. I'm the contracts administrator um, in, in the Department of Contracts and Procurement. Basically do the same thing that Ben, ben does. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, I didn't know why you were on there, Erica, but uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, yes. Oh, I so yes, I apologize for coming in late, Joanne and Stephen. I honestly, it wasn't on my calendar. So my apologies. Not, not a problem. Not a problem. I know how things get lost or they just don't, they go to the wrong email or whatever the case may be. But we're, we're just kind of getting started here. It's, it's no big deal. But all of this is under About Us. If you ever want to contact anybody, their, their direct line is right here or their email is right here. All you have to do is click it and then it goes to that link and you can immediately get hooked up. So that's the best and fastest way to be able to contact any one of them. Fastest is this number right here. I normally have that in my pocket. So if I can't answer it, just leave me a message. I'll get back to you just as soon as I can because there is a possibility I'm on the telephone. But other than that, I want to show you what is under the member tab prior to getting there. It gives you the information of become a member and it also does available contracts. It shows you where the member login is. I want to show you about the member login in that I don't want to log in just yet because I want to still show you what is out front before you get to the member login. But each one of you should come here under helpful links and set up a new account. What that does is give you that login information, access to that due diligence folder that has all the contract information that you really need if you really wanna make a PO or a purchase with our vendor. It also gives you that peace of mind as to how we do our contracts legally and competitively for all of them so that they pass anyone's muster. I want to remind you we are a government entity. We do do it for our government entity. We use our own contracts constantly. We have a lawyer looking over our shoulder the same way you guys do. It has to be compliant. So without it being compliant, we wouldn't be able to use it. So 
we use it, cities, counties, universities, school districts, you name it, all of them get to use our contracts and we do everything legally and competitively. So the other thing that you can see before you get logged in are the available contracts of all the vendors that we may be, excuse me, that we may have. Um, anytime you come to, a, to the contracts, you'll notice that we've got the vendors, we've got their contract title, that'll come into play later, unfortunately, but it will. And then we have the contract number. The contract number is what we ask for you to put on your PO anytime you're making a purchase through joint partners to be able to send it to the vendor so that, and a confirming copy to us so that we can see that's being used. You can also see if they have any sort of a hub or SBE determination certificate on the contract. These can also be sorted in a manner in which you can be able to see those. Well, I say that it's supposed to be there. We've we're been there. We go. We've been having it work on this. Um, so you can sort by contract number. You can sort by contract title. You can sort by vendor. Okay. Um, and you can get to any one of these. Let's just pick the very first one. This is what we call the landing page. Once you come to the landing page, this can easily be printed out so that uh, you can see exactly hey, uh, when the contract starts, the day. Joanne? Yes, sir. It sounds like uh, Chris has a question. Is it okay to interrupt you and ask questions? Sure. Okay. I, I hate to go back to the register as a vendor page. I, I just registered and it listed a UT system contact of a Sarah Reed who I have never heard of or seen, and it has an address that isn't pertinent to UT system. And, uh, I was just trying to figure out who we needed to talk to to get that fixed. We can do that now. And it listed a who? It listed a Sarah Reed. But when, when I filled out my information, it brought up uh, the, the a main UT system contact, and I believe the name that came up was Sarah Reed, and I don't recognize that name. The address was a PO box that I don't believe is pertinent to us anymore. So I think that may have been saved inside your computer somehow, because I do not have that information at all. Hmm, that, yeah, that popped up on your website. So yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. On my website, really? Yeah, well, I, I, I literally just tried to register as a vendor through your website right now. As a vendor or as a member? No, as a member. As a member, and you went into the set up a new account? I did. So when you go there, you put in your Texas, University of Texas system? Correct. Uh, Joanne, he went in as a, a vendor just to see what the vendor would see, not as no, a- No, 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 no. I went in to register as a register to set up an account so I could use it. Okay, so so when it's self-populated, did you click on University of Texas System? Yes. Okay, so when it does there, and then I completed all of this information, and then I submitted my information, and it brought up a screen that had the information that I filled out, and then underneath it, it had UT System contacts, Sarah Reed, PO Box, whatever, Austin, Texas, and a phone number, and. As long as I've worked here, I do not know a Sarah Reed and she doesn't come mm -hmm. up in our direction. We don't have anyone of that name. Yeah. I don't I don't have anyone by that name either. I'm let me verify over here. There. That's oh, it. Stacy Reed. Okay. So that must be the person that back in 2012 registered UT system. Ah. Okay, back in back in whenever. So we can change that, but that's that's history right there as to how it got there and who registered okay now we need that changed yes okay if you can you can email me at any given time let me know what you want there we can certainly fix it up chris do you okay. mind uh emailing that information to them sure no problem thanks when you get when Good you get time. over here under the available contracts and we go into whomever you want to like we were in it doesn't it doesn't matter but it gives you all that information that you need to know. It also tells you whether there's any remaining contracts, what date those will expire, who the contract manager is for choice partners, what that phone number might be. It also tells you what their approved 
four, and then about this partner. That part isn't so important, but if you click on their website link, it'll take you to their page that also has the Choice Partners logo on it, so you'll know that it's back and forth. You can click the logo and get back to, the, to us. Now, there's also some other things out here, just exactly what we do and what all current biz that we have out there at the current time. This shows you when they're due and what have you, okay? All of that is without a member login. Whenever you come back here to the member login and you do put in your set up a new account and get there after the Stacy Reed, sorry about all that, but we'll, we'll get that fixed. Um, you can set up your new account, put it, make sure it's University of Texas system, but make sure you let it self-populate and then click on it. Don't try to just type it in the way it look, the way it's showing at the bottom. It won't accept it until you give me a, a good name. But um, excuse my username here because I am an Aggie and I know you too. Is, <laughs> you know what I can say. But anyway, <laughs> what, what that does, once you do log in, it does bring you to this member dashboard. Um, let, me, let me fix this pending user real quick since I do have both of you here. I'm going to go ahead and get Ben in there and I'm going to get Christopher in there. Okay, so y'all are more than welcome to now go back and navigate into the member dashboard if you would like to. Once you get to the member dashboard, it gives you five different little tabs here. One is going to be the get a quote where you can go in and get as many quotes as you would like from the system, depending on what you're looking for. Maybe, maybe you're looking for chemicals. I don't know. I'm just picking, okay? Maybe you're looking for chemicals. And, and whenever you get to chemicals, maybe it's for those hand sanitizers and everything else that we've been using so much of lately. We have these seven companies that can produce chemicals for you. So at this point, you can either do a select all or you can select however many you want to select. It's, it's strictly up to you. But what you can do is put in your product service information. What do you need? When do you need it? And where do you need it? Uh, it's mainly going to just be what do you want? Who do you want to, find, to have find out about it? This is normally either you or maybe a project manager that you might be doing it for. That person's phone number or your phone number. The date that you need the product in your hand. The date that you need the renovation finished, whatever date that might be, because all of this, once it hits the vendor, should be coming back to you within 48 hours. Now, if it's a sizable list or uh, maybe you have a scope and spec, then you can attach it here. This file shouldn't be any larger than 10 meg, unfortunately. So if it's maybe a large PDF, you may have to save it in a shorter condensed version. But once you hit submit now, then that'll go to these vendors that you picked up here. Once it goes to those vendors, you get an email that lets you know exactly how many you have asked a quote for, what you have asked the quote of, and then it lets you know once they start coming back, then you'll be able to kind of keep track of, okay, who's answered me? I still have two more out. Okay, I'm, I've got two in, now I've still got one more out. If by chance they don't answer you, you need to let us know that because now I've got a non-responsive vendor and I'm gonna be unhappy with, about that, okay? So th that's what this get a quote is and that's what it does for you. It, it will really help you get through anytime whenever you do need more than one, uh, quote from a vendor and you you can only find one uh, it goes through the current vendors it's the same thing on the vendor side you'll notice except whenever we do click on somebody like education galaxy they're the first ones there it gives us all this same information except it now gives us a sales contact so this sales contact is should be the primary contact for this vendor on this contract and that'll be the one that knows the most about it. But once we get down here to the bottom, you'll also see that the hubs start showing up, but also you'll see that this due diligence shows up. When that due diligence download file is clicked, then all those due diligence files that I showed you 
under the FAQs all of a sudden show up in this file that is right here attached to this contract. So this contract is an older one because you see that it's going to die in 2022. So this one's going to have a whole lot of information, but it follows those due diligence rules so that they're all, all of this information is out there for you. The contract is down here. That will be the most current uh, renewal with the original contract there. We do run a SAMS report just in case you need to know that. We do collect the 1295 to make sure that the Texas Ethics Commission is happy with all of their questions. We have the uh, pricing list that should be attached to this vendor. We have the uh, uh, cost price analysis will be shown here. Also know that in certain cases, you would wanna do your own cost price analysis, depending on the dollar amount that you're spending. So that's, that's strictly up to you guys and Edgar and things you may or may not have to follow according to the guidelines. Uh, it shows you what the IED was, the advertisement, the affidavit, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, we're moving right along. Um, so once you get your vendors, then the only other good thing, well, we do have the contract list in PDF form, and we also have it in Excel form. So I normally, I used to send this out once a month, but I no longer do it. I, I just send a reminder to you to let you know that a new one is out. And what this file gives you is the name of all the contracts, their contract title, their approved area, all the information, salespeople, all the way down, whether they're Edgar, whether they're uh, TDA arm compliant, just what they may be, okay? So all of that's available under contract list once you're logged in. We also have a food section where you can go and just have the food. I don't know how many people might be interested in this, but they have their own dashboard that gives you all of their procurement uh, documents and their child nutrition labels and their pricing and their commodity. Their pricing's a little bit different because they have to do line by line by line by line. Uh, luckily in commodities and construction, we don't quite have to do it quite so tedious as they do. Um, we have commodity processing, you have to sign up to be part of, uh, part of that, but we do have a grocery bid that is a line item that you might want to look at to see. Um, once you, once you get over past the uh, food, and we have what I call supply catalog. Our supply catalog is probably the best 1,100 items that are the most used throughout government, and it's a low bid. So anytime you have a, a used product, even if it's paper, um, it's gonna be in here and it'll be by the truckload, by the pallet, by the case, by the box, depending on how you do it. You can go in and look at all of it, see how it comes. If you just want um, three hole punch paper, you could look there and see exactly what price per case is. Um, you can see who the vendor is. Once you do these, these, this supply catalog, it works just like a, another catalog. If you do buy now, then you're gonna wanna put in, it'll ask you the quantities and get to the very end so that you can make your PO or get your draft order ready or whatever. Um, I have a draft order here for $26. I can load it as a, a download it. Uh, I can see the details or I can proceed to check out. If you leave it in draft, it just kind of sits there and waits on you. If you proceed to check out, then it will require you to either put in a PO number or uh, immediately uh, ship it to the vendor. Now, this is, that's the only way that it immediately goes to the vendor. If you leave it in draft, it will not go to the vendor. So once you, once you go through here, you'll want to make that decision, that determination, whether you want it to go ahead and go straight to the vendor or whether you want to wait on the PO maybe coming at you later. Okay. I have a question, Joanne. When you're searching through the catalog, it says keyword or number. That's different from a, a commodity code, right? It's just the, like, yeah. I don't know, a SKU number or something else. Can you search by something like a commodity code number? Unfortunately, we do not have this catalog set up by commodity code. 
Okay. So, so it, unfortunately, you can do a search, but the the it's going to be more of a keyword for butcher paper, or a keyword for for. What is that um, number it's referring to? The MNF number, I see, or? That's the manufacturer and then the manufacturer number. So once you make your favorites, you'll have this number, okay? And so, okay. so then you could be able to search by your favorites. I got you. You, know, you can make a favorites list. Okay. Um, at first, you may want to download the whole catalog there's an option for downloading the whole catalog. I don't recommend that because the prices can change on a couple of them every three months. It kind of depends on the market that drives that. But normally these, these uh, prices are static for a year. Um, but every once in a while that we do get manufacturer price increases and then I, I can't hold the vendor to it. So that's how it is. Um, we are going to get a better website in about three months, hopefully, that is going to have all those searchable different ways to search. This one is pretty difficult in that it, it wants specific information that is already there. It doesn't search outside the boundaries, if you will. So um, hopefully, hopefully we'll have a little bit better of a search function once we get our new website. If you have a particular vendor in, in store, you can search by a particular vendor. Of course, you need to get back out of all of this. So Jody, that, um, yes. I was just going to take them back and show them that the five digit code that CP assigns to each item has to be used on any PO that they might create outside of this system. The five digit code, you want to show them right there has to be used with that vendor, that manufacturer, in order to get that pricing. It's not the same pricing that manufacturer might offer outside of our supply catalog. And that and that kind of goes whenever you do go with your buy now click, it, it stays with the product. See how it stays with the product on there. So I guess if you're buying outside of this kind of catalog, then you wouldn't know to do that. But otherwise, that number is going to be right there and flows with this log. So any other questions on this one? Uh, OK, good deal. This black catalog, we do it every two years just for information purposes so, so that uh, we can get the best price uh, on different things like paper and toilet paper and forks and spoons and different things that you do on a daily basis and stuff like that. So hopefully that that kind of helps you. Um, that is more or less the overview of the website with everything that shows you as a login or as not a login. So uh, if you've got any questions on that, I'll take them now. Otherwise, I will shoot you over to Stephen Kendrick. No questions? Okay, Stephen, it's yours. This is the real Stephen Kendrick now. Jeff has <laughs> left the building. <laughs> yes, I'm the Stephen Kendrick. Uh, I'm Senior Manager of Facilities Planning here at Harris County Department of Education. And I work with Choice Partners on, on their JOC contracts. I do most of their JOC trainings, estimating trainings, how to use RS means in the unit price book. Um, and then I help with some of the legal compliance. Um, we use the JOC contracts internally. So we have our own facilities department and we use all of these contracts in house as well. Uh, let me share my screen. Host disabled. Hey, Jojo, you gotta maybe make me a host again. You're clicking share screen and it's it's not allowing under participants if you can click on my name and click more and i think you can make me a host if not if you put the slides up as i talk you can advance also you're on mute joe joanne we can't hear you perfect Share. And then 
see where we're at in this PowerPoint. They already covered all of that. So job order contracting, um, I'm gonna kind of cover what it is, how it works, and the role that Choice Partners can play. I know that UT Austin has a pretty robust program already. Um, I I've, I've, am a part of CJE, which is Center for Jock Excellence uh, with Ben uh, Stitza and, uh, or Sitza. And so I know they have a pretty robust program. I don't know about your other locations um, and what that looks like. So why does legal compliance matter? Um, different procurement rules apply, whether you're doing a maintenance contract or a construction contract, right? Contracts not properly procured can be voided or unenforceable. Officials and officers who violate procurement statutes can be subject to criminal penalties. And as we learned uh, here in the Houston area, um, disaster or FEMA funds can be deobligated. Public works contracts may trigger bonding and prevailing wage requirements. And these legal mistakes can delay projects, jeopardize budgets, and result in cost overruns and subject the governmental entity to financial liability to vendors and to subcontractors. And what I find is a lot of times the procurement people maybe understand the laws, but the facility guys don't, and they're not always following them. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of cover some of that. Uh, so what is a job order contracting? This is straight out of Texas Education Code 50, chapter 51.784A. And it says an institution may award a job order contract for the minor construction, repair, rehabilitation, or alteration of a facility if the work is of a reoccurring nature, but the delivery times are indefinite and indefinite quantities and orders are awarded substantially on the basis of pre-described and pre-priced tasks. So this is basically your on-call construction contract. This is the contract that you put in place today for those emergencies or projects that come up tomorrow, next week, next month, that where you don't have that three, four, six month window to procure it yourself. Um, this is not intended for new construction or anything, any major construction. It is simply minor construction for those projects you need done quickly. Review the jock quote. So when I go out and I teach uh, facility guys um, how to estimate how our means works, how the contracts work, um, these are the things that I review. Choice Partners has a review program. They have a contract compliance specialist. Um, and these are what she reviews. So she doesn't get into scope and specifications. That's the, the responsibility of the project manager, but we will check to make sure that the correct city cost index was used. That basically means that they localize the pricing for where the project is being performed. Um, we're gonna make sure they use the correct coefficient. So in job order contracting, they don't bid time and materials. They bid a multiplier, which is called the coefficient. If they bid a 1.0, that means they agree with the unit price books pricing. If they bid a 0.90, they're going to give you 10% off. If they bid a 1.10, they're going to increase the price by 10%. We'll verify that they use the correct coefficient. Um, they use the correct pricing column. So we request that we state in our contract that they'll use right hand means. That basically means they're going to use the labor, the material, the equipment, overhead, and profit column. So they should never add additional overhead. They should never add additional profit. Data release, is it the most recent? Did they use non-pre-priced line items? And if they did, did they follow the contract language for those items? Um, attempts to pass through the cooperative fee. You should never see a cooperative fee pass through. Um, that's included in their coefficient. If it's on there, they're basically billing you twice. Division one um, is basically your overhead line items. So site supervision, project manager, equipment rental, uh, trucks, cell phones, insurance, things like that. Our contract restricts the use of division one. Um, in our definition of our contract, it states what's included in the coefficient. And so we should never see those items included in the estimate. Um, unless you've got an extenuating circumstance where you requested that they use them. So we will review that for you. You can send the estimate, line item estimate to us um, and, and we'll review it for the contract compliance. And then adjustment factors, those are basically uh, 
they, they increase or decrease the pricing in the price book based on working conditions. So if they're working in a confined space or in a, at an extended height, something like that. I require a line item estimate for every project here at HCBE. Um, they do not get a PO without it. We don't run with the lump sum because the statute says a lump sum substantially based on the unit price book and their legally bid coefficient. And there's just no way that I can verify they followed the pricing of the contract without it. We highly recommend that you use a master job order contract or a master services agreement, whatever you call it. Um, you have to understand that the cooperative contract is written for any and all governmental entities. It wasn't written specifically for you. And so you want that master job order contract and you know it should uh, include everything specific to you. So your prevailing wage rates, are y'all gonna hold liquidated damages, retainage, um, terms and conditions specific to your entity? Um, things like that. And then it should have like an attachment, which is the job order itself, which includes the project specific scope of work. And then it's supposed to be signed by both parties. That's actually in statute where it says uh, a job order is signed by both parties. Trade Jock versus Jock. Um, Choice Partners offers Trade Jock as well as Jock. You've probably seen if, if you've been in the facility contracts at all with other cooperatives. Uh, some of them are doing the same thing. Um, trade Jock is basically the use of one trader division. So it's HVAC, it's plumbing, it's electrical, it's roofing. It reduces your overhead expenses when, when a general contractor is not needed, when there's not multiple trades and you don't need the additional overhead of a general contractor. And it's to, it's to procure those single trades uh, services that fall under construction, right? So we know uh, OSHA has three criteria that we're supposed to consider when determining if it's maintenance or construction. Um, the one that I hear the most is light, light. Um, but they say not new or upgraded, um, scale and complexity of the project, and the physical size of the project being worked on. So we know through case law that simply replacing a chiller is no longer a time and material maintenance contract, right? Um, they're supposed to do a test and balance. They got to bring it up to code. Um, they got to meet the new energy standards. They're supposed to be an engineer in that because Texas Occupations Code 1001 states that if it's mechanical or electrical and it's over 8,000, they're supposed to have it engineered. And so, where you, you know, it's over 25,000, so you need a payment bond. It's over 100,000, you need a performance bond. So it falls under the legal definition of construction. And that's why we've created the trade jocks and why so many others have as well, um, is for those single trade projects that still fit the construction definition where prevailing wages still are required. The jock is your general contractor. They can do anything and everything. They have no restriction. And then let me see. If you look at the bottom of these slides, I reference where I got all this information from. So. I kind of run off of the trust, but verify. You can look at these up and verify everything that I'm telling you. A couple of takeaways. Um, you need to make sure that, that your facility guys are establishing that procurement method with the vendor prior to having them quote the project. The issue there is that a lot of times they just ask for a quote, they grab a lump sum amount, there's no contract number on it. They go back to the vendor and say, hey, are you on a co-op? And they say, yeah, just add 2% to that price and, and, and we're good. They didn't bid their off the street price plus 2% cooperative fee. They bid a coefficient against the unit price book and they need to provide you that pricing. And the only way that they can do that is if they know which contract they're using and which pricing structure they're following. Um, include the contract number on the quote and the PO. Um, verify pricing by requesting the vendor's line item estimate with their legally bid coefficient. When utilizing a co-op, you should send a confirming copy of each PO issue to the co-op. Um, coefficients are not created equal. So you cannot shop vendors and assume you're gonna get the lowest price because they have the lowest coefficient. Um, if you use co-op A, they allow full use of division one. You use co-op B, they use left-hand means. 
use co-op C, they use right-hand means. And, and when I say means, RS means is typically the unit price book that's named in these contracts. That's, that's the price book they're using. Left hand is without overhead and profit and right hand is with overhead and profit. So in that example, uh, I could bid a 0.63 if I can have full use of division one. Now, if I have uh, right hand means restricted use of division one, I might be at a 0.9. And then if I've got left hand means, I might be at a point one of 1.15. But that 1.15 might be cheaper than that 0.63. In theory, the lowest coefficient should always uh, be the best price. But because these contracts are written so differently from co-op to co-op, there's no way to compare them apples to apples. Um, not all co-ops are created equal. Um, we learned this big time during Harvey. Um, they wanted the lead agency for any of those federal funds to be in the state of Texas. Um, and then also the, the cooperative contracts had to be federalized. Um, so we had to follow um, 2 CFR point, 2 CFR part 200, 316 through 32, no, 317 through 326. That's what y'all call uniform guidance. Um, in K through 12, we call it Edgar. But it, it's, it's where we follow the six affirmative steps. Um, we, we proactively reach out to minority owned and women owned businesses. Um, we advertise in minority publications. Um, we uh, have contract language that requires the general contractors to follow the six affirmative steps for any subcontractors. Um, so we follow all those different steps to ensure that they aren't just legal for state and local funds, but they're also legal for federal funds. We follow the most restrictive, which is why our contracts are also four years, um, because child nutrition, TDA, USDA, they all require a, a one year with three renewals. Um, and then make sure you get governing body approval when required. A lot of information really fast. Do you all have any questions? Not right now, Stephen, thank you. <laughs> Good deal. Well, then I'm going to pass it back over uh, to Jeff and just let him wrap it up. Thank you all, though, for your time. Thank you. Okay. Real Stephen has left. And you're stuck with Jeff again. So, And again, I think we're about right on time. I, I think you were uh, wanting to be done by 2.15. We might be a couple of minutes early, Frank. So, uh, that's always that's never the worst thing um sure i just wanted to uh basically say number one thanks for taking a few minutes i know it's hard to get three or four or five or six folks at one time to take take time from, from getting real work done and producing things and and you know i always use the proverbial pushing paper from one side of the desk to the other and and and, and getting requisitions completed or, or writing contracts or whatever so uh, we appreciate uh, taking that time. And I think the next slide, we've got some information. Man, I cannot see those things. <laughs> About half blind. I did it's, it's like white on white and, and there's not really an outline for those arrows. But these are just uh, generically, most of us that, uh, well, it really only saw about three or four of us, but uh, these are some of our contract managers, some of our billing folks. Uh, Janet, who's also on the line, uh, does a lot of our marketing and, and uh, helping with, uh, it's called the client engagement group uh, reporting. Uh, these are some of the websites that we use. This is just a good sheet for some of the other folks that are involved in our group. Most of them yeah. you, uh, you didn't meet, but just to, just to kind of sum it up, you know, we're we're full service. We didn't even really talk about food, but there, you know, as you guys go and look for yeah. kitchen equipment, or I know the, the food. We don't have a kitchen at the admin. We have uh, break rooms. So uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a different type of a system. You know, system yeah, is really not like a UT institution, comparatively speaking. Okay. Well, we can't sell you a bag of Fritos. I mean, that's not worth our time. <laughs> we have uh, the vendors, but I think, you know, this is great contact information. Are we going to get a copy of the PowerPoint today? 
we'd be happy to send it to you. And that'd be uh, great if somebody sends it to me. I can uh, forward it to the team. Okay. It'll always be well, available on the website under events. I mean, under presentations also too. If you lose it or whatever, I'll I'll put it under presentations. Okay. Yeah. But, but the main thing we just wanted to say is, uh, you know, just just keep us uh, keep us on that list of as far as uh, talking with people. Um, I, obviously, we we want to be very uh, careful and reverent because we know you have a, a tremendous jock program, but we find a lot of people that uh, that use ours as as over uh, over overuse or excess or things like that uh, at times. We also uh, just, you know, some of the some of the commodities of this, the, some of our guys that do tremendous, even in the university areas are, are the guys that sell a lot of the soap and hand sanitizer and things like that, the Buckeye guys. Uh, we've had some of our folks that were on the previous list that we've had of vendors that have worked with you. Uh, they're now called Xerox Business Systems, formerly Dayhill. And uh, they've really gone gone head to head with, uh, I call it a four letter word, but it's only a three letter word, D-I-R, uh, uh, on head to head with, with a lot of the, the D-I-R things on the state contract. And they've been extremely competitive and, and been able to, uh, to, to uh, be competitive and, and a lot better price, including the service and, and uh, things like that. So uh, they've been successful at the, at the university level. And I believe they've done a, a decent amount of work with the UT system in the past. So, uh, so don't always, you know, technology you always, you know, brain goes to DIR. It looks like, you know, we've had some of the other, the GTS and some of the other guys do some technology guys work with you, but uh, just, just let us know how we can help. We're not here. We're not going to uh, badger you, but we're here a couple miles down, a couple hours down the road. And we'd, uh, We'd love to help you out. Uh, we've got a, a robust program. I think we've got 18 or 19 full-time employees. And you see some of them listed here, various contract managers billing, some of the admin in our group. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we like to, we, we just always like to say, you know, especially when we're talking to members is that we're, we're like you, we've, we've got to do things uh, legal and compliant. We're, we're subject to, if the state audits HCDE, we are part of HCDE, we're going to get audited. Um, and so we, we're not uh, we're not just you know farming out third party contracts to to lead agencies all across the country or whatever. And so we write all of our contracts, we manage them, we keep in close compliance. And and the uh, the attorney we have and her firm and her colleagues are uh, are very instrumental in the education world. They understand that, and uh, we feel as though we've got tremendous contracts, uh, good prices, tremendous service, and uh, let us help you out. But, yeah, that's so, my soapbox. <laughs> well, let me just say before we open it up to questions for the team, but, yeah. um, you know, my intention with this was really to introduce my team to you as a choice. And so they're aware of you. Some like Chris may utilize this more than others. We'll see. Um, there's a variety of ways that this can come up in our institution. It's helpful for us to know you're an option. Beyond that, I want to ask any of the team, do you have questions for them that you that are coming up for you right now? Are you sure? Um, do you, I heard you say that you're part of Harris County. Are, are you driven similar to ESC 19 to where it's it's Harris County that kind of drives your short, your sourcing selection? Or, or do you talk to members to, to kind of figure out what people are looking for to, to do your sourcing? We love input. From members. In fact, that's one of the things I had on my note right here. And again, I, I hate to keep going back to the, that jock, but we've got a, a jock solicitation out that closes April 30th. And if you guys are going, oh, we need to get Joe Blow general contract on there. And, and we're not doing our internal for another two years. Let's see if they can respond to choice and, and help us out or whatever. You know, um, we, we love that kind of feedback. We love that kind of information. And uh, there are times it's not very often because we kind of have a set schedule of renewals and what's coming up next and, uh, and, and new areas to go into. But there are times when, when, when people say, especially uh, there's no line, you guys are the 800 pound gorilla. You say, yeah, we're really looking at this, but it's going to take us a while to uh, get this going. Have you ever thought of this contract or, or whatever uh, where, you, where you could, you could help move the needle and say, why don't you guys look at this? Uh, we we absolutely positively would uh, would entertain any of those conversations. We 
yeah. Joanne, me, any of us, we, we would we'd all like to hear it and, uh, and and see how we can help out. Yeah. You know, are you guys? You, know, you guys know who you are. You're 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 the big guys on the block, and and we we'd love we'd love to help. But but our contracts are driven based on feedback. Um, you know, we decide if we're not going to go out for another contract, and we're we're not going to you know advertise, or if we need to add a service or a commodity that we don't currently have, and that's all based on member feedback. Do you? Um... Whenever you're you're looking at your contracts, are you uh, is, it, is it pricing set or is it, can they offer better than pricing? Um, that, that's, a, that's a great question, Ben. Uh, it's always a not to exceed price. Okay, uh, and that's what that's well, except the supply catalog. Excuse me, that's the hard bid, uh, the, the the hard bid line items. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a not to exceed price, and we find that all the time. I use the example a lot. You know, if there's a widget out there that's for a dollar on our uh, on our contract, and I always use the term HISD, but let's use the UT system now. Well, you know, that dollar's good, but I'm used to buying this at uh, 87 cents. And and, the, and it's a it's a decision for the for the vendor to say, well, 87 cents, but I buy 30,000 of them at 87 cents in a year. Okay, I can make money. That's absolutely allowed. Yes. But you just, you really can't, they can't exceed the price that's on the contract. Okay, cool. Or the discount. Uh, how, as far as the catalogs too, so that, that supply catalog that you have in there is, is what people use the most, right? But as far as the vendor contracts, um, are, they, are, there con are there catalogs open? So are, are they restricted to what's specific inside the, the contract itself? Uh, a lot of it depends on on, on how the contract is written, what's included, because we get in those conversations all the time. It may say and related items, or it may say uh, catalog discount on everything that's in sure. this catalog, and they may refer to a specific catalog. We find some of those things like a, or the big, like a scholastic. Sometimes it's it's these four catalogs, and they didn't put the library publishing, or didn't put you know one, the periodicals or something in there, and so therefore we don't have anything to work off of. A lot of it is the devil's in the details. It's, we, we're looking at the documents. We're looking at the contract. We're looking and seeing what's legal, what, how it's actually written, and uh, you know, it, it's a, uh, it, it's not a, it's not a universe. It's not. There's not a universal answer to that. A lot of it is in literally the documentation and the contracts. But most of the time, if it's a catalog discount and they refer to these catalogs, it's going to be a discount. You know, at least this much, and it can always be a, a better discount. But even the vendors that are on the hard bid supply catalog, we, if they get awarded that hard bid line item, let's say they get awarded one line item out of that catalog, they're still able to add their their full catalog and their full offerings discounted. It just doesn't go into the supply catalog piece, the hard bid piece. Well, I'm thinking more along the lines of like software and and you know tech tech vendors that are going to have like a broad catalog that you're not necessarily mm -hmm. list every every piece of software that's available, right? So, yep. is is the vendor going to have that information, or do we need to come back to you guys to to validate? What's the easiest way for us to to verify what we're getting and and that it's within your purview? Well, a lot of times you can look. You you've got that uh, when you use your uh, log on and password mm -hmm. got a lot of the due diligence a lot of the information there which includes uh, their the pricing they submitted and you're looking at pretty much everything that we're looking at that was submitted to us but you can submit it to us as well and we will help you verify yes yes I'm sorry we're, we're not going to leave you on an island and say hey go use your login and let us know what you find out you won't no. get that you won't get that you won't get that answer from that Go Before you ahead. ever log in, there is a section on that landing page that tells you what those that vendor is approved services are. So then depending on the catalog or the pricing that they have given us determines what in that line can they do or, or that category. So so with technology, we do that mostly once a year because of ch ever changing technology and because of new everything coming in. Uh, we're doing technology this summer again, um, but we do it more as a broader scope. So we do hardware software so that anything they offer us under hardware software, they are more than welcome to give to us as long as they give us pricing on it. 
are are your without digging too much your tech catalog like are they are they discount from list generally or how how do you manage those most time, most of the time it's discount from their catalog. Now they have to give us a hard copy of that catalog so that we know what it's a discount off of. And it can't be just on the website that they can manipulate and change and everything else. So, so they're pretty tied down in what they have to supply us so that we can always go back to figure out what the price actually should be. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, any other questions from the team? I don't have any questions, but you know, thanks Jojo and Steven and not Steven for putting together this presentation. <laughs> oh, that's my new name, not that. Yeah, not Steven. I'm gonna, hear, I'm gonna hear that in two minutes when I stand <laughs> up. Hey, Steven, can you come over here and? That's his new name in our office. Yeah, yeah, thanks it. a lot. Is that, Is that Erica doing that? Yeah, oh, yeah. thanks Erica, yeah. Oh yeah, thanks a lot, Erica. Just, uh, You're welcome. <laughs> we, appreciate, we appreciate the time and effort that goes into these presentations. So thanks yep. so much. Okay. You bet. Let us know if we can help. Okay. I think Agreed. we're about a couple minutes early. We're close and uh, please let us help. Yeah, we're, we're here. You know, we're not, uh, we're not a Cyclops or three headed monster. You know, we're real people and we'd love to help you out and, and you know, a little bit about right. us now, put a few names and faces together. All right, Jeff and team, thank you for joining us today. And yeah, did you hear that? We yeah. appreciate it. Thanks, <laughs> oh, yeah. Another Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys have Thanks. a good day. All of them Stephen. Yeah, I, I know that's all you heard. How do we do that? Right. Stop share. All right. Stop sharing. And there we go.